Welcome to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Ariel Epstein, joined now by Gabe Marenzi. Gabe, how excited are you for these New Year's Six Bowls? Uh, great time of the year to be a college uh, football fan, and we've got some great opportunities on the board uh, this week, Ariel. New Year's Eve, 2 o'clock Eastern time. We have the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl between Florida State and Arizona State. Total 54 and a half spread at four, favoring Arizona State. Are you laying the points? No, this is one of my favorite uh, bowl games, and it always has been. The Sun Bowl, uh, a tradition. You can set your watch uh, by it. And, you know, the Sun Bowl, to me, has always been um, the, uh, the official start to New Year's Eve. Like, it's acceptable to start drinking when the Sun Bowl starts. You start drinking before the Sun Bowl starts, you might have yourself a drinking problem. You start drinking at 2 in the afternoon, you don't have a problem. You're just a Sun Bowl fan. Uh, but I, I got to tell you, many a New Year's Eve, many a New Year's Eve in the Morency household has gotten started during the Sun Bowl. Always been a fan of this football game. Uh, one thing I'm not a fan of is laying points with Pac-12 teams uh, in bowl games, though. This is unbelievable, guys. In the last 25 bowls uh, that the Pac-12 has been in, all right, the last 25 bowls that the Pac-12 has been in, they've only covered three times. <laughs> That's right, three times. Times, uh, we're now talking about a uh, a three and twenty two ATS run uh, by the Pac twelve. Now I know Florida State have a new coach coming in with uh, Coach uh, Mike Norvell. I actually like that. I think they might have found their guy, and uh, Norvell will have a watchful uh, eye over this uh, football game. FSU have more blue chip um, talent and skill position players than Arizona State does. And listen, I love Herm Edwards. I think Herm's done a very good job. Not great, but very, very, very good uh, job with Arizona State. But with that being as stated, they're without their top wide receiver and they're without their uh, top running back, both who have decided uh, to forego this game to prepare for the National Football League draft. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, Akers isn't there uh, for FSU. Uh, but uh, FSU's passing attack is pretty lethal. And I'll tell you what, the Seminoles' weakness is their secondary I'm not so sure Arizona State's going to be able to take advantage of it. As I stated, I'll take uh, Florida State. Yeah, I know. They're not a perfect football team, but they play um, They play hard. They hung around with the Florida Gators. They have the talent to win this game outright. Give me the four points with the Florida State Seminoles. Happy New Year. Navy facing off with Kansas State in the Liberty Bowl at 345 Eastern time. Gabe, since you're already going to be kind of drinking at that point, what's your pick? Well, I'm not saying that I'm going to be uh, drinking because uh, I'm a professional, unfortunately. <laughs> as uh, Hey, I'd like nothing better to get smashed at 2 in the afternoon and watch uh, the Sun Bowl. Uh, but I know that we're going to be cashing uh, tickets. Um, and I'm going to be cashing another ticket here with the Middies, Navy. We already gave you guys Air Force uh, last week, and Air Force continued the theme. Uh, you know, military academy teams now, guys, are 35 and 14. 35! And 14 against the spread in bowl games. All right? They don't let up. They get up for every game. Uh, it's a very difficult attack to face um, if you don't see it uh, every year. It's relentless. They just run the ball like 75 times, and it wear, wears you out. Um, you know, even these, like, blue-chip programs, they're not quite used to dealing with an onslaught rushing attack that the military academies uh, bring to the table. Let's dig in a little bit deeper, though, uh, right now. So I'm, I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, well, yeah, and I've had people throw this back at me. Well, the military academy teams, they're 35 and 14 against the spread of bowl games, but they're probably always uh, underdogs. That's why they have such a great record against the spread because they weren't great over the years. Wrong! Wrong! And in fact, let's dig in. Military schools, 10-1 and one against the spread in bowl games when favored by seven points or less. We're talking about a Navy Academy. They're a 10-2 football team. Their only losses were against Notre Dame and Memphis. They're the real deal. This isn't your grandpa's uh, Military Academy uh, football team. They play in a real conference, man. They play against Houston. They play against Memphis. They play against SMU. They play against fast teams. Kansas State is not a fast team. Kansas State historically struggle in bowl games uh, as well. You have a coach uh, for K-State's going to be coaching in his first uh, ever bowl game. I'm not getting in front of this uh, Naval Academy. Uh, they're a damn good football team, and uh, they're going to continue the tradition of military academy teams covering in bowl games. The Navy wins. Uh, when you see a military academy team playing in a bowl game, you enlist. Sign me up. 
LT smash it. Switching over to the New Year's Day games. I know, Gabe, you're excited for this one with Michigan facing off with Alabama in the Citrus Bowl. However, you're not taking a side in this one. What are you doing? Well, this is a really, really tricky uh, football game. And I am a Michigan Wolverine fan, which uh, knows I know that Michigan suck in bowl games. Uh, You have to figure that eventually uh, Harbaugh is going to win a big uh, football game. And this would be a pretty big win. Michigan are kind of in a decent spot here in the sense that If they get blown out, people will just sort of shrug their shoulders, roll their eyes, and say, oh, well, Harbaugh got blown out again uh, in a big game. They come in here almost playing with house money. There's no pressure on Michigan uh, right now. People really aren't talking about this football game. People are talking about the motivation factor uh, for Alabama uh, in this spot. It's the first time that Alabama is not in the college football playoff. In the first five years, they were in the playoffs every time. So, you know, the motivation factor is real. Um, Alabama lost a couple of defensive players and, you know, really good defensive players, but their offense went unscathed. Everybody's coming back and playing in this game, even though a bunch of them are going to the National Football League anyways, which tells you they actually do care about uh, this spot. Alabama are the more talented football team. Um, Michigan getting seven points is attractive, but ultimately I think the way to go here, Ariel, is just to bet the over. Why overcomplicate things uh, here? We got a total of uh, 58 points. Uh, you know, you want to hear something crazy about Alabama uh, this year? Um, the Alabama Crimson Tide have scored 35 or more points in every game that they played this year. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah, and they lost two. They scored 35 or more. And in fact, they scored like 45 or more in most of them, uh, to be honest. Even when they lost uh, to Auburn, they got to 45, right? Or 46, whatever it was, 48, uh, 46. Bama could put points on the board. When people think of Alabama football, you know, they used to sort of think of defense and, you know, Greg McElroy and a game manager at quarterback. Mac Jones can sling it around. They've got NFL caliber wide receivers that Michigan are going to have a hard time dealing with uh, for 60 minutes on a football field. Meanwhile, Michigan are 9-3 to the over in their own right. Uh, Michigan have been putting up points uh, on the board. They've scored 38 or more points in four of their last uh, five games. So where we're going with this game is... The over, I think it's going to be a track meet, and uh, this game is going to get into the 60s, maybe 70s. We only have to get to 59 to win the bet, Ariel. Michigan and Alabama go over the number. Keeping it on New Year's Day, Minnesota versus Auburn in the Outback Bowl. Minnesota coming off one of its best seasons, 7-2 and two in conference play in the Big Ten West, tied with Wisconsin. So, Gabe, are you on this Minnesota bandwagon, or are you just thinking Auburn, SEC, no doubt? Uh, you know what? I was on the Minnesota Golden Goal for uh, bandwagon earlier in the year, Ariel, uh, but um, the things with bandwagons is they crash, and you have to get off uh, before it uh, crashes. And, you know, we saw the Gophers' reality kick in a little bit uh, down the stretch, losing two of their last three uh, football games. They're dealing with a very, 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 very good Auburn team here. This Auburn team is real good. If you look at the teams that Auburn uh, lost to, you know, they, they lost to the elite uh, programs. And, in fact, at the time, every team that Auburn lost to was ranked in the top seven. All right? They're that good. And we saw this Auburn team uh, beat Alabama. We also saw Gus Malzahn talk about how he thinks that uh, Bo Nix is going to be a national champion. He said, I got a guy right here that's going to be a national champion. He was sending a message uh, to everybody. He was sending a message to the boosters. He was sending a message to the program. He was sending a message to the kids. He was sending a message uh, to the other teams in the conference that Auburn is playing for real next year. You know, Gus Malzahn's a national championship caliber coach, but he's sort of really up or down. Like, you look at his career, a lot like Eli Manning. (laughs) You know what I mean? Eli Manning was kind of average, but he won a couple of Super Bowls, Right? Gus Malzahn's been kind of average, but eh, he's got quite a few big wins on the resume. And he's also got some talent uh, here as well. So, you know, it's the Outback Bowl. It's hard to keep up with these stupid names. You know, the Citrus, the Outback, and, uh, you know, what, and everything else. Uh, the Walmart Bowl <laughs> and everything else uh, in between. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing about this game in Tampa, the Outback Bowl. It's SEC versus Big Ten, and the SEC has owned it. They're 7-3 and three straight up in the last uh, 10 Outback Bowls. I expect um, this to uh, to improve to 8-3 and three, um, here. Auburn's just going to be too much in the trenches. Minnesota have big kids. Minnesota's O-line is good. Minnesota have a couple of really, really, really good 
uh, wide receivers, uh, but they're not going to match up with Auburn's uh, skill over the course of this football game. I normally don't like laying points, Errol. I'm more of an underdog, uh, better even when it comes to college uh, football. And I'd like to take uh, the Big Ten because the Big Ten is great in bowl games, uh, but they're not great against the SEC. And I just think this is going to end poorly uh, for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Um, the, the Auburn Tigers, 6-0 and against the spread in their last six non-conference uh, games, as well as the Auburn Tigers are 10-2 and against the spread the last 12 times they've laid points as a favorite as well. SEC beats the Big Ten in the Outback Bowl. Another Big Ten team and in a bowl game that you can't really say is a no-name bowl because it's the Rose Bowl. And it seems if you're not in the college football playoff, this is the bowl game that seems the most prestigious or at least one of them. It's Wisconsin against Oregon at 5 o'clock on New Year's Day. Gabe, are you going Big Ten here? It's the granddaddy of them all. And you know what? I've been to the national championship game before. I was there when Tim Tebow played against the Sam Bradford uh, in Miami, Florida. I had the over. It didn't go well. All right? I've been to Super Bowls. I've been to national championships. I've been to NBA Finals. I've been to Stanley Cup uh, Finals. I have one thing on a bucket list, actually, Ariel. And I even used to live in Los Angeles, and I never went to the Rose Bowl because Michigan didn't play in it uh, when I was there. I've always wanted to see my Michigan Wolverines in Pasadena and go to a Rose Bowl. And hopefully uh, Harbaugh can make it happen. Make it happen, Coach. Uh, But we do have the Big Ten representative uh, here in the Wisconsin Badgers taking on the Ducks. And I got to tell you, this might be one of my better bets, although you got to be careful. And, you know, you never no one game is better than another, uh, actually, ever, guys. But let's just say I really like this one. As of this taping uh, right now, as I speak to the lovely uh, Ariel Epstein, uh, the Big Ten has beaten the Pac-12 in 11 straight uh, bowl games. All right? They freaking own them. Uh, We've talked about it, though. The Pac-12... Um, you know, we, we talked about the last 25 bowl games that the Pac-12 have played in. They've only covered three times. It's unbelievable. They're three and 22 guys against the spread in the last 25 bowl games. I was on the Ducks against uh, the, the Utes. I don't like the Ducks I hear. Uh, the physicality of the Wisconsin Badgers is going to be too much. You guys remember, man. Wisconsin gave Ohio State all that they can handle. Wisconsin's an elite football team. All right? You know, it's usually quarterback play that holds them back conservative play calling. Their quarterback play is just a little bit better now. And I'll tell you, speaking of better, Jonathan Taylor, there's not a lot of running backs better uh, than this kid, all right? This kid is going to be a stud in the National Football League. He's going to be a stud in Pasadena uh, on New Year's Day. I don't think Oregon's going to be able to stop him. I also think the total is a little bit uh, low here. When you think of Wisconsin, you sort of think of blue collar and cheese heads. Uh, But the fact of the matter is they can score the Badgers offense, put up uh, nearly 35 points a game. Um, they're going to put up points against this Pac-12 team. Uh, Wisconsin are on a 4-1 and overrun right now. Meanwhile, the, uh, the Oregon Ducks have scored 34 or more points in seven of their last eight football games. We have a total in the low 50s here, and we're going to have some beautiful weather uh, out there in Los Angeles and Pasadena, California. Uh, the Big Ten is going to win this football game. Love the Badgers here. Badgers win in a high-scoring, entertaining affair. Those are Gabe's best bets. For Gabe Morenci, I'm Ariel Epstein. Thanks for joining us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up.